where our next presenter is Per Nolén, CEO of Alligator Bioscience. Welcome, Per. Thank you. <clears throat> right, are we ready to go? Go ahead. So, thank you so much. Alligator is a clinical stage public bite immune oncology biotech company, and I would like to go straight to the company highlights. So, Alligator has generated five clinical stage programs built on our own technology platforms. We have a very strong innovation track record, and we brought them all the way from ID to clinical stage. Today, we focus on two of these assets, uh, lead assets that are moving into clinical phase two, and those two assets are optimized for a best and first in class profile, which is supported by a very strong preclinical and clinical package. Pivotal studies coming up already in 2021, and I will come back to this soon. Also, the last point here is that innovation continues. We have just launched a new concept, Neo X Prime. And this is a way to introduce personalized cancer therapy with an on the shelf bi specific antibody. I will come back to how that works. So let's move on. But first, a comment on our business model. The problem with immune oncology today is that it's very effective in only in a subset of patients. And there are very extensive efforts now to increase that to a larger proportion of the patients. Alligator has leading products in two of the key, key pathways being explored. And both those have a first-in-class potential. If we look at the business model, we try to find partners to bring those to the market. And we have been quite successful in the past over the last five years we have revenues in terms of milestones, upfront payments, around 50 million US dollars. In the long-term perspective, we are of course looking for royalties to continuously finance a company. For each of our products, they have a potential to get royalties at peak sales in the range of 1 billion sec. So that's the potential of the products we're talking about. It's 1017 and it's metasalimab that we are advancing now into clinical stage two. Let's look at the timelines. Metasalimab has completed clinical phase one, and we are now ready to submit a CTA for a phase two clinical study in pancreatic cancer. It will be submitted in a few weeks. What happens next is for 1017. This product is today in late phase one clinical development, and we are about to uh, publish the phase one data in the spring next year. That data is primarily a safety study, but there's also potential for first efficacy signal. Once we have released that data, we are ready to submit the CTA for a phase two study also for 1017. And in the end of the next, next year, Mirasalimab will present its first interim efficacy data in pancreatic, pancreatic cancer with both programs 1017 and Mirasalimab having a chance for efficacy results in 2022. Let's move on to 1017. 1017 is a 41 bb agonist antibody, and this is a key pathway on T cells. T cells being the effector mechanism of the immune system is the important part of the immune system to get anti-tumor effect. It's quite similar to PD-1, while PD-1 is releasing the brakes, 41BB pushes the gas. And it's just like a car, you need to do the same at the same time in order to get the car rolling and get somewhere. Also for 41BB, there is now emerging clinical validation. And we have a leader in the next generation 41BB antibodies. And I'll try to explain why that is important. Next slide. So this is a first generation antibodies, urelumab on the left hand side. This is a BMS product. It has been in clinical development for many years and it's a very strong activating antibody but also associated with toxicity. And you can see that on the tolerated dose level 8 milligram which is very low. On the right hand side we have utamilumab. It's a Pfizer antibody and they overcompensated in fear of toxicity and developed a much weaker antibody. That antibody is well tolerated, but there has been no effect demonstrated. So what we have developed, eight or 1017 in the middle, this is an antibody with a very strong activation, 
but they're also a tumor selective activation. And this allows us to get strong efficacy, but also good tolerability. A fact that is now being confirmed by emerging clinical data. So we released a few weeks ago data from the ongoing dose escalation study. We have cleared 100 milligram and are currently dosing on 200 milligram, which is more than 20 times higher than BMS had to stop. Still, we have quite few drug-related side effects. And among those side effects we do see, there is indication of immune activation. So it looks really promising. Also, if you look at the patients in the study so far, you can see the 10 patients below. We already have three patients having stable disease for more than six months in the study, despite having such a small patient subset and only being at quite low doses. So really promising data. If we look at the timelines, we have presented interim data that was in the, in the autumn, and we are approaching a full safety readout in the spring. But there's also a chance to demonstrate efficacy in that readout. And then we will submit a CTA to start clinical phase two in one of the indications shown below, head and neck, gastric or ovarian cancer. We are uh, developing protocols for all three and we will communicate shortly which indication we will go for first and that will be submitted in the autumn. So let's take a look then at metasalimab, the second asset we are focusing on. This is an asset that has completed clinical phase one and it has a different mechanism of action. By activating antigen presenting cells, it will induce T cell infiltration into tumors. And this has the potential to make cold tumors responsive to PD-1 therapy. And that is a fact that actually has been demonstrated now in pancreatic cancer. So let's have a look at the data. This is data in pancreatic cancer. It's one of the leading causes of death in cancer, the second leading cause, in fact, and it has potential for very fast uptake. In pancreatic cancer, one of our competitors, Apexion, has now shown that CD40 may give much higher response rates in pancreatic cancer. If we look at the bars here, the black bar is standard chemotherapy response rates in the range of 20 to 30 percent. And what you can see in the middle, the red bar, that PD-1 does not add any activity. And the exp explanation is quite simple. This is a cold tumor. There are virtually no T cells in the tumor and then there's no point in stimulating the T cells. What CD40 does is to bring in the T cells into the tumor. And if you look at the green bar, the Apexidion data show that CD40 increased response rates to 40%, and then you can add PD-1 on top, and the increase is rather spectacular, plus 60% response rates. And by that, we are now moving into pancreatic cancer. But first, let us take a look at the competitors. The short story here is we have benchmarked to the competitors and we have same or better efficacy than all the competitors and a superior tolerability profile. The key competitors are the three on the upper left, Alligator, Apexidan and Abvi. And we have benchmarked also to Apexidan and that also confirms that statement equal or better efficacy. And that is shown on the right hand side. So we're taking it into pancreatic cancer. This is a trial we are submitting a CTA for and it's a rather clever design we think ourselves. You do combine here with chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is a black triangle that damages the tumor cells. Two days later, we will add on metasalimab and the damaged tumor cells will release antigens that are taken up by dendritic cells and that we induce more efficient presentation two days later. And then this is repeated in sequence. Once we have shown activity on top of chemo, we will add on PD-1 in this study. So the timelines for this is that we will dose the first patient in the spring and we have a chance for a first efficacy readout end of next year with a full readout in 2022. So let's leave the clinical programs for a second and just say a few words on our novel concept, new X prime. One of the key prob problems here in immune oncology is that the immune system doesn't really know what to attack. The tumors is quite similar to the normal tissue. 
So what NeoXPAM does is teaching the immune system exactly what to attack, and it does so in a very clever way. NeoX prime can identify tumor material released from the tumors that can be found in the circulation, bring that physically to the dendritic cells and make them present that on the surface. And that will lead to a personalized immune response. This is very attractive from a theoretical perspective, but what really caught our interest is the fact that it's superior in efficacy to anything we have tested before. Next slide is just an example. On the left-hand side, we can see in the green bar is new X prime response rates, and the blue bar is a combination of two different monospecific therapeutic antibodies. So clearly far outperforms everything we have seen before. And we're now looking for partners to bring this to preclinical and clinical development. We have a number of other assets and those we are developing in partnership. And I will not go through those in more detail. So just a summary. We focus on ADER 1017 and Midasalamab. Both of those programs are at the front in their respective field. And we are now moving them into clinical phase two for efficacy assessment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Per. Thank you. Uh, let's start. Obviously, you have a, a broad pipeline with a lot of things going on. But let's start with the Neo X Prime, which is this, this novel concept. Yes. What reactions have you had to to this concept? Yeah, that's been quite a lot of interest. And I should say, from smaller companies wanting to collaborate to larger companies really seeing that there this is something completely new. And in a way, it builds on a basic bispecific antibody. But the fact that it can attach to tumor material in the circulation and bring them to the dendritic cells brings a completely new function into immune oncology. And this is what causes interest. Of course. And maybe revealing my own lack of knowledge. There is nothing like that out there. There is what's the competition like in that specific space? We are first in the world with this concept. So there are other companies that potentially can repeat and do what we do, but they are far behind us. And if we look at your pipeline more broadly, what is the competitive landscape like, like for your candidates? I would say immune oncology is very competitive for any target. Mm -hmm. uh, with our lead candidates, Midasalamab and 1017, we are among the three leaders for both of those targets in the world. Mm -hmm. So we have a very strong position. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking ahead to next year, what is the most important things for you for 2021 to achieve? Next year is clearly the start of the clinical phase two studies. Of course. So that's what we're really looking forward to. Yeah. And will we, can we expect news in terms of partnering perhaps from during next yes, year? Yes, as you may know, we have increased our capacity within business development and we have uh, exactly. attracted a very senior US business development expert called Gail Mills. And she's now part of the executive management team. And she has ex extraordinary deals in her baggage and she is, uh, uh, now focusing on both of those two clinical candidates as well as new X prime for partnering. So we have high hopes, but you can never promise when the business development. Of course, but we look forward to following you and thank you for coming. Yes, thank you.